I'd like to call this meeting the Board of Selectmen meeting today, August 31st, 2020. We could all just begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Everybody had an opportunity to look at the uh, manifests. Mm -hmm. Any comments, questions, or anything? I didn't, I didn't have any issues with it. Take a motion. We approve the accounts payable manifest of August 24th, 2020, and the payroll manifest of August 25th, 2020. Well, wait a sec. It was the agenda says August 31st and September 1. Well, I'm reading yeah, what go, I got. Go okay. Yeah. I'll second then. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Uh, what were the dates that, that you wanted on these? It was um, accounts payable August 24th and payroll manifest August 25th. Okay, minutes from uh, 810. Everybody had an opportunity to look those over? Yeah, I looked them over. I didn't have any issues. Okay, if everybody's good with them. Motion. Make a motion. We approve the minutes from 81020 as written. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Aye. So, uh, reports from assigned boards, uh, budget meeting on October 1st, is that, did I read that right? Okay. Yep. Planning board? Uh, planning board. We had a meeting 826, uh, the development on Mitchell Road, uh, a hearing uh, been pushed to the second week of September. And then we had case uh, 1900, Route 4 Dumas developers. They've extended their, uh, for 90 days, and they will be uh, back, I believe, on December 11th, uh, 2020. And that was about it. Okay. CIP? Nothing yet. 300th? Hey, just a question on the CIP. So, I mean, we're going to talk about the new schedule uh, given SB2, but does that also, I assume that's going to impact FCI process too? Yeah, we're, uh, we've asked for uh, submissions from the departments and the school uh, in time we can meet later this later in September. So, okay. uh, as long as we don't have six meetings, we can probably get it done before the budget. It's too crazy. Okay. Uh, school said they could do it. Okay. Okay, 300th. 300th. Uh, I'm waiting for the first Zoom meetings coming up here pretty soon. Um, but I, I do know that they talked to Chris about the cookbook. That's all squared away. So. Yeah, they. You had given them the okay to uh, spend 1,200 bucks on cookbooks, and the cookbook ended up being longer than expected. So they need something more like 1,600. Yeah. And I said, yeah, go ahead. I looked at that. It went from 100 page to 170 pages. So. Wow. Ooh, that's, yeah. Depending on the cover they use, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah. But their, their break evens are Good 100 bucks. I figured you didn't need that. So you don't get it for that. So that's fine. So go right ahead. Okay, Marston? Uh, I have nothing. I have, how has the rain helped the fields out there? Have I you been out? I haven't been by and not since the good rains. Yeah, yeah. I haven't either. Get out there. Doesn't look too good right now. So. Yeah. Yeah, I was on Thursday. Not look. enough rain to. Right. Look kind of weedy, but. 
All right, town administrator report. All right, uh, I got a bit of a pile for you. Um, election Tuesday, a week from tomorrow, primary election at the school, seven to seven. I think you've got your, you've, there's been a lot of email traffic from the moderators about your assignments and stuff. Uh, you're all good there, unless I hear otherwise. Um, the uh, setup is gonna be Thursday around noontime. Uh, there's nothing going on in the school. It's a holiday Monday. <coughs> we don't have a lot of staff around Friday, so we're jumping in on Thursday and give us time to uh, figure out what we missed. But I think everything's okay. We're, we're ready to go. Uh, the um, reval. Uh, Wait, just a second. Yeah. Back on the, back on the Election. elections. There was that email that there's training tomorrow night via Zoom. That I think we're all expected to participate <coughs> in as well. Uh, uh, reval. Um, I had a conversation with Jonathan at Avatar. I just wanted to relay some notes from that. This is the week when um, uh, owners can have their appointments with Avatar to discuss the preliminary uh, assessments that went out, that came out in the mail a few weeks ago. Um, the, uh, they had about 100 of them scheduled. It was a call ahead schedule of, hey, uh, schedule an appointment. Um, uh, Avatar's feeling really good about the, the uh, reval from a, a scientific point of view. They are flush with data and a ton of sales. Um, and, uh, statistically, they feel like they're in very good shape uh, because of all the information they have and all the churn in the market. So um, that's all, uh, that all looks good. Um, and they've got a good spread of locations and, uh, types of properties and all that stuff. Um, so they're going to have a busy week, though, aren't they? And yeah. there are quite a few. About, about 100. <coughs> um, which didn't seem to um, surprise them. I mean, we have we have 2,800 parcels in town or something like that. So, um, uh, and what they're seeing was not, at least their initial look at it was a lot of that. Um, nothing's changed. Why is my value gone on so much right, kind of conversations? Right. Not. Um, a uh, type of property or a neighborhood in particular that was generating a whole lot of uh, interest. So, um, very broadly, it's too early to um, it's too early because they're in preliminary data mode. Um, but uh, to, to have any formal reports, but um, very broadly, vacant land and water waterfront properties increased a little bit more than others. Uh, single floor. Type houses, ranches did a little bit better than colonials. Um, that's probably doesn't surprise you to hear those things, but that, that's what they're seeing kind of uh, anecdotally. And younger neighborhoods like Strawberry Lane, Maple Ridge seem to be running a little bit higher than they would have guessed otherwise, okay. as opposed to the older places. So I don't think any of those are big surprises, but that's just kind of the general story. Um, and again, townwide, we saw you know, a, a, a valuation go from six to eight million. So. Big increase, everything went up. So they're meeting with Avatar. What's the role of the board from this point on? So Avatar will take what they hear from those uh, property owners that they have appointments with. If they need to make adjustments or go back out and look at something or correct something, if there's something wrong, they'll do that. And then they'll do a, they'll do the final um, the final numbers. You will have to certify that work at some point. Okay. Um, but there won't be anything until the abatement process uh, kicks in yeah. that the board will see anything for it. So, uh, anything else on rebound? No. 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 Uh, New Hampshire retirement system, or uh, police and firefighter pension programs, uh, set through a riveting last week about uh, the uh, estimating and actuarial processes they're using. What, what really matters to us is that the rates that we pay as employers for uh, the pension programs are going up quite a bit. Um, you may recall we do that on a percentage basis, percentage of payroll for our uh, uniformed firefighters and, and police officers. Um, 
the unfunded liability statewide went from about five to six billion as they did their semi-annual update. So that turns into higher rates for us. It's gonna be um, police uh, this year at 28% of payroll. In the middle of next year, it goes from 28 to 33%. So it's about a 25% increase in what we pay. Um, fire's going from 30% to 33%. So um, those are, over the course of a couple of years, we'll turn in some good sized numbers for us. About a 13, 13 in police, I think it's almost 20 grand a year increase in the next two years for us because of those those changes. Um, That's not that bad. Well, we're not getting any more for it. I know. <laughs> neither, and neither are re our retirees. Um, you, uh, you may also recall this is something the state used to pay for until 10 years ago. Uh, and uh, they set the employee percentages. So that's, a, you know, that's locked in by state law. There's, yep. there's no, all of the added burden this time, but lacking in what, uh, action from the legislature is going to fall on the employers, which is the town. So that's where that sits. Uh, we are close to having our audit done. I expect to have a draft report this week. Um, we're going to get one finding uh, from them. There's, they've had trouble reconciling uh, year end bank statements, uh, checks that have uh, stale checks that were never cashed. Um, it's an immaterial amount to them. Okay. Um, so that's a big problem. But We'll see when the, when the final comes out how they work. But, um, in the transition of treasurers, we may want to just do a transaction to clean that up and zero it out so that we don't have this variance going forward. Uh, if you're up for it, uh, I was going to put the Route 4 property on your agenda for next week. Uh, we set that aside when the governor put the kibosh on. Uh, evictions and foreclosures and all that stuff that's been lifted uh, and, uh, I would want to start that out with a refresher on where we left off because we haven't yep. talked about it for six months um, and also while we're doing that I thought we might talk about uh, two other properties one is the the corner of Freeman Hall Road there's a parcel there that we tried to sell last year almost sold buyer backed out I think that Probably has some value. It's a good time to sell. You might want to consider that. And uh, across Route Four from the former USA Springs property, the big property, we have, we have another parcel that we've been sitting on, waiting for the USA Springs parcel to disposition in some way, shape, or form. Um, we've got a nine-acre parcel across the street there. Um, I've had somebody inquire about that, so. Uh, we haven't really talked about that parcel in a long time because we've been waiting for the USA Springs piece. So uh, I'm going to bring you stuff on both of those two. We don't have to do anything with it, but uh, if you want to think about it, that's where the, um, that'll be next week, our uh, next meeting. And lastly, we are f uh, about to finalize our revenues and associated other uh, <coughs> paperwork for tax rate setting. Um, We've been launching revenues. Uh, we, we are going to be fine in the final analysis. We've got about $2 million in budget of revenues that aren't property taxes. We're going to project somewhere within twenty-five grand of that $2 million, plus or minus. That's where we are right now. So um, we had said it. You, you had said before town meeting and at town meeting that you would use fund balance to make sure that we we didn't lose anything uh, revenue-wise. We, you know, we make ourselves whole, um, and uh, I'm still feeling good about that on the revenue side. So that's um, going to be within reach. We start to set uh, tax, uh, no problem. It won't, it won't phase you at all. So uh, I think that is it. Hey, Chris, I just got a text from someone saying that they're having a hard time hearing us. So I just think pull, pull your mic a little bit closer, please. Hello. Give it a shot. Okay. All right. Nothing else there, Chris? No, All right. Uh, Actually, speaking of which, have you heard back from Red Thread? From what? Red Thread. 
Uh, those are the two guys that were in here. That came to visit? No, I haven't, Not yet. I haven't heard anything. They said they were on vacation or something. Uh, yeah. 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 But no, I haven't heard anything. Okay. All right. Action review items from last meeting. Road standards. I'm oh, sorry, what were they? Looks like road standards. Oh, yeah, that was just a um, let's get it scheduled on the agenda to discuss it. Anybody else talk, uh, talk about that or no? Or, or no? If we do want to talk about it, I think we put it off till after our seven o'clock meeting. Well, you know, I, I think we can put it off. I think we just need to get it on agenda. I don't think we need to talk about it tonight, but just let's get it on the agenda somewhere. Does that make sense? Yep. Mm -hmm. Are we good with it? <coughs> Schedule that. Yep. Assessing the uh, intent to cut and the exemption. Everybody had a chance to review that? So those are all in here. Those were all what you sent us of the printed copies yeah. here, right? Yes. Okay, so the only one. Those, those came from Kevin. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the only one I had a question about was, was this one. Um, I guess it's related to Tuckway, is the state park, is that correct? Just from logging at the state park? I, would, I, would, I know they did log in at the State Park. That must be what this is. What do you want to know? So was that just their indication of their intent, or is that indication this of... This is... I think this is catching up on their intent after the fact. Okay. Um, but they pay. Yes. They pay the fees just like everybody else, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. But that's not what this is. Okay. That's what I was just that's trying. That's my to... interpretation. Okay. That's what I was just trying to understand. Do you want us to do this at the same time? You, yeah, if you want to, or you can, if you want to discuss it, we can do that later. We'll be <coughs> non public later, so. Okay, I'll just, we'll hold that one okay. in case anybody wants to talk about it. <coughs> General business. Um, yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, did you need a motion on that? No, your signature. Okay. Um, I have a gen general business. I don't know if you want to address it now or later. Um, it's kind of related to the road standards. Okay. We can do it later if yeah, you want. Yeah, we'll okay. do it later. Okay. Any other? Anything that isn't on the agenda? Yeah. Is that what you're asking? Yes. No, nothing that isn't on the agenda. Okay. Are you uh, making a motion to, for the intent to cut or the disable tax credit? Or no? Okay. Ever? We, we just have to sign. HMA policy. All right, I sent you uh, a couple different things. Uh, how many have lived through the NHMA policy? Every two years, the uh, Municipal Association uh, kind of gives its lobbyists a set of priorities and marching orders, um, and uh, member member cities and towns, which is all of them now. 
an individual member submit uh, proposals for what the priorities and the policies of the MHMA ought to be. That goes through an extensive committee process and, and gets to this point, which is they have a one-day policy conference where they approve mm -hmm. this body of, of stuff. Uh, each city or town uh, sends somebody to this conference and they vote on each component of it, you know, up yep. and down, typically, maybe to some of the ones, but not much. Uh, and we are at the stage where uh, you need to decide if you want to send somebody and uh, do you want to uh, send them with marching orders on each of these various things. We've, we've done everything, and I think I've seen three of these now. Um, one of them we had a knockdown drag out, spent a couple hours on each individual one. How's, how's Nottingham going to vote? And yep. uh, on the other end of the spectrum, we had a select and just cross out a couple that they didn't want to support and everybody said fine and we just moved on. So the question for you is how much time do you want to spend on this and how do you want to approach it? Uh, yeah, so I mean, just based on my experience in the past, I think, you know, we've, we've had Chris attend and um you know i think we should review them and i think i mean i don't know that we necessarily have to go through the ranking process that we've done in the past but i do think we should look at them review them and understand um if there are any that we feel strongly about that we really want chris to um understand and you know voice an opinion on if he has the opportunity And what's the date of this, Chris? Uh, the conference is Friday, October, month. October second. Okay. <clears throat> so we would have to do that at one of the upcoming meetings. At your next, yeah, your next meeting. Uh, can you text Charlie, uh, Cheryl Smith <clears throat> from Charlene's phone and see if you can help her with that? They're trying to get him from Zoom. Oh. Um, see if you can Sorry, trying to help another board or committee get a meeting off the ground. So, I mean, that would be my recommendation is that we all review them and discuss it at the next meeting and give Chris indication if there's something that we feel very strongly about. Or it, it, I would also encourage that if there's anything that we have questions about that we try to reach out to him before that meeting if there's something we need to understand. Everybody in agreement with that? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. You know, you're so experienced at it now. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Day out of the office. Okay. 2021 budget calendar. Okay, so uh, we don't have to decide anything tonight, but uh, before too long, I mean, uh, in September, I think you ought to you ought to come to terms with what you would like to do around the deliberative session. We met that one first, so uh, the budget committee will be setting its own calendar at their next meeting on the first of October. Uh, and uh, obviously, we're going to need to conform to that calendar. But you actually set the uh, date, time, and location of the deliberative session. And uh, it would be helpful in terms of talking with the school and talking with the committee if we had an idea of what, you're, what you were thinking on that regard, either with a firm decision or yep. marching orders or what, whatever. Um, and a second question to you, is there anything you'd like to see differently in, our, in the staff's you know, budget presentation to you as we get uh, through that? The, the SB2 changes the... Um, Changes the last step, but in terms of developing a budget, it probably doesn't mean that much um, to the department heads. But um, if there's anything differently you'd like to see, um, it would be good for me to hear that now. It doesn't change step. anything in the way that we develop the budget, the way that we agree to the budget, and then the way that we present the budget to the public, other than it's a deliberative session, right? So we would yeah, still. You, you will probably uh, have some more political considerations around what is in the budget itself and what is a standalone Warren article. Uh, over time, more and more things will find their way into individual Warren articles. That's yep. what happens with SB2. Yep. It's not, yep. you know, it's 
fine. It's just what that, that's the reality of it. Uh, so you will come across decisions, uh, maybe not this year, but certainly along the way, where does this want to be a standalone vote or does this want to fit into the operating budget somehow? Uh, but other than that, I, I don't think it changes. The school, the school has been doing this for a long time. They have done Tuesdays and Wednesdays the last couple of years. Uh, I don't know if, if one of those was a outlier from a pattern. I, I had thought it was more of a Tuesday thing, but you have about an eight-day window to do them both. But a Saturday to Saturday window, two Saturdays, and all oh. the days in between. Uh, in the law that you're allowed to do these in. So, so given that window, does that force us to have it the same week, or does that give us enough? Yes. It does. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's it's a Saturday the thirtieth, oh. Saturday the sixth, and I'm oh. pretty sure the school district falls in the same sixth, you know, same window. They're voting oh. the same day, so uh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. So, <clears throat> Gotta jump right into the fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's arguments to be made on, yeah. on both sides of it, right? Like, I, I think my initial my initial thinking was, you know, do it on a weeknight. Um, but I don't but, know that people are going to like back-to-back -back weeknights. My concern is fatigue. You know, yeah. you know if you're going to have multiple meetings, you got the school, you, now you have ours. You know, I'm concerned that you know folks are going to get you know meeting fatigue and, and need to not show up and then we could run into the same issue where if we have it on a saturday you know we only have a select few that show up um who knows i mean now that it's an sb2 it may be totally different um well i mean i think yeah i've gone back and forth on it too ben yeah. i'm thinking that the the people who come to town meeting are the people who want to come and participate yep. in the live process mm -hmm. and those are the people that are still going to do it and they've done it on a Saturday so does that mean that we should stick with the Saturday I would feel better that it, it we have a Saturday that is designated for this because I do know in the past that sometimes school board meetings the deliberative session can run several hours and you know, here we are, one midnight, and people got to get up first thing in the morning. They may be more apt to deliver it on a Saturday, and at least for the town portion of it, school won't change theirs. I, I haven't had any communication with the school, but they're they're in a well-established group. Right. So I, right. Yeah. 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 I, I, I think one of, one of the things that we heard a lot about at town meeting was that people didn't want to give up their Saturday to be there. Yeah. Um, granted, that was the people yep. that. Were, you know, people that spoke in favor of SB2, they, but they were the majority. Right. That was, that was right. one of the driving right. things in the narrative. I don't know if, you know, uh, there was only 150 people there that day, so um, take that for what it's worth. But yeah. that was one of the major yeah. complaints yeah. about yeah. the old way of doing business was yeah. that people didn't want to go on Saturday. So. Yeah, but people, I mean, it's kind of, I mean, there's no right answer here, right? Because if the, if the school board's having it on a Tuesday, say, that leaves us with Wednesday or Thursday. Right. And now, you know, is it you come Saturday or do you come two nights in a row or two nights out of a week? I, I, one thing I would not want to do absolutely is try to do them both in the same night. Oh, no. No, no, no. You know, which no. is a not. No. I'd like the other board members to weigh in, John. Hey, two nights in the week. We have our night school board has their night. I've been to enough of them that you know the handful that's going to show. For some reason, there's something that comes up in our budget that's a real, uh, you know, stickler for the town. Then I don't see even I don't. I personally don't see a large turnout for our delivered session for this select board. I wish there was a larger one. I'm not saying I don't want a larger one, but just knowing over past experience, if there's nothing critical on there, it's not going to be a large mm -hmm. turnout. Anthony or Tony. Sorry. How do we feel about doing it um, on a Saturday just to um, try, like appease the folks that were upset about losing town meeting? 
kind of what, I, what I've gone back and forth on. Yeah. You know, I'd like to check out what some other towns do. I know Barrington. Barrington's consecutive Saturday. Yeah, yeah. But they're not all day, are they? I probably varies year to year. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know. Well, I understand. People have to work, and again, yep. meetings are at night, whatever, they're late. Um, being the first time we've done it, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe we should do a Saturday, at least the first time. I would be, uh, I'd be more apt to say, let's do a Saturday. Saturday, you said. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's also not cast in stone this nope. year. No. Nope, right. But Where would we hold the meeting? What would you say, John? Where would we hold the meeting? Yeah. Again, I think if we use the, the gymnasium over here, it would be more than enough ample space for our, <laughs> our meeting. But and last year at the school board meeting, I was there for that, and there wasn't even forty people there. So here, I mean, right? yeah, you know, and they set up over a hundred some chairs, and we could have fit everybody in this. There's more people here tonight, I think. So <laughs> well, and that was on a big budget. It sounds to me the general consensus is, is this board sounds like a Saturday would be more be more productive per se, and it holds to uh, keeping with somewhat of our tradition of for the past almost 300 years of town meeting. I think a Saturday morning might get a little better of a turnout. Yeah, I, I think so too. So well, just let's make a decision tonight and let's say Saturday. I'm good with that. Yeah, I'm good with that too. Yeah. I'd like it to be the first Saturday of the of the period all right done good you all in favor of that yep all right yep okay and then we'll see how it goes this year what kind of feedback right. we get we can make adjustments wherever yeah, we exactly. need to exactly any more topics and discussion on that no all right you ready to roll right into our appointment? Rock and roll. Jamie? Mm -hmm. Hi. <laughs> Come right up. Yeah. Hi. This is my daughter, Caitlin. Hi, Caitlin. Hi. Be sure to talk into the mic, state your name and your, your address, please. Uh, my name Welcome. is Tam Tammy DeFrancesco, 214 Raymond Road, Nottingham, New Hampshire. Caitlin Brown, 214 Raymond Road, Nottingham, New Hampshire. Okay. Welcome. Yes, we're here to, to discuss the uh, water cross event. Yes. So, um, we, just, we understand that there had been some complaints made, um, and we just wanted to come today to answer any questions that anyone might have. Um, and in, in the event that there isn't anyone here with any questions, we we're hoping to move forward with the permit and get that today, so we could get rolling for the next event. Well, I, I think the biggest uh, concern that uh, has arise out of all these. Uh, meet so far is the noise complaints uh, and it sounds like in the beginning there was a little bit of a poor communication between the event organizer and say the neighbors that abut your property um, don't haven't said that I mean we did speak to them since then we the did. second time around right the, um, this, yeah after the, the right, meeting and all the all the property abutters are aware there's a third one coming the, the a lot of the pop property abutters are here okay yes and we sent um, letters out to um, the property of butters and then spoke to those that were closest um, and the letter included information dates and times of the next event and the practice times as well um, information about the noise um, a way for them to get in contact with us or Steve in case they had any questions or anything before the event gets started um, so we we tried to do a much better job of making sure that everyone knew when it was going to be and what to expect and and had an avenue of letting us know if they had any concerns is that what we saw what she's referring to is that the did we see that is that the one you sent to us yeah okay 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 um i have a couple of concerns ben go ahead Donna. um so so the noise for sure um and i know there's a butters here and there's probably some supportive and some not supportive of it i think um personally i live about a mile as the crow flies away from it 
it was quite loud, quite loud. Um, and people who were, you know, on the far side of the lake could hear it as well. So noise is definitely a factor in my mind. Sure. However, there are two other things that concern me. The one is that I think that you guys indicated that over the course of the three days there was 1,500 people there that we saw in the email that you sent. I counted it wrong. Um, I counted an another set of um, bracelets. It was like 700 and... We count. We, we number the bracelets. We counted. I counted another set that they were getting to a different. I, I included that in there. So there was seven hundred and eighty-six. We have the brace. We had numbered bracelets this time. Okay. So it wasn't fifteen hundred. No. Okay. Because that that's concerning to me about the number of people. Because when they first came, it was supposed to be two hundred ish. Two fifty. Yep. Yep. And now this application from the fourteenth says five to seven hundred across three days, and you had seven hundred fifty. What's the next one going to be? So I, I have concern about attendance. But is, is the people going to make the noise louder? What is the concern about that? Well, there was no concern with traffic, no concern with porta potty. I'm no concerned about what's committed to in the permit and what's not. And that, if you let me finish, my my other complaint, and this is more of a internal one, and that is that again, it's my understanding from the email that was sent that the because of the horrible thunderstorms that came Mr. through, Lake. that um, the detail officer on duty allowed the event to go longer for catch up or additional races that should not have happened the officer on duty had no authority to extend the time he should have been complying with what was agreed to in the permit yep but we did only go 15 minutes beyond that it wasn't an hour beyond I would die well, <laughs> it, and it was it was to, uh, it went to seven o'clock on Sunday night. Yeah, it did. I mean, I was I mean, so it wasn't fifteen minutes. Oh, I thought it said they could go till six thirty, give or take the engines running. So I didn't know. Six p.m. Okay. She did say we could go an hour. I asked her, and she said that she she gave us a permission. So my concerns are, you know, creep, right? How does it, I mean, well, and, and the planning board yeah. weighing in on this, yeah. Yeah. which is a very big concern in my mind. Do we want them to see the letter? Go ahead. No, no, I'll give them the letter if they want to see the letter. I mean, I mean you can summarize it, just yeah. kind of read the summary of it. Uh, so the planning board sent us, as the board of selectmen, a letter. So, you know, I'll read it out, dear. Uh, chairman, obviously the planning board has been aware of the end uh, of non permitted use for property 214 Raymond Road parcel, you know, maps uh, 69 lot 10 as the area being as residential agricultural zone. Um, and they understand that the board, you know, we've been in discussion with you guys for these events that having and we had public hearings about it. And obviously we talked and we granted the last two. Um, but as it comes from the planning board, that they're saying it is not our jurisdiction to allow you that you need to go to them and get a zoning and a planning board approval for this because the fact that we were granting a single time and since now this is going to be three times that in their mind that we overstepped our bounds of the single time just and I, now i'll give you a copy of the letter it's just from what you hear from us is there any rule or anything that they're they sort of cite to to say that that you can your limit is one? It's more about our authority to be able to do it. <clears throat> and so, is the authority of this board only a single single events? Well, this is this is really new to us. Yes, yes. you're the first event that we've. Sure we've ever had to deal with so okay. you know as to be a little green on our or I'll say myself or whatever on this event you know I mean I'm not I'm not against your event at all but you know we're in that way of uh, thinking you know making sure it's right for everybody sure we we, we came into this um, we staff came to you 10 days before the first event after we learned about it yep. you know, right so we we came to you and said um, how, does, how do you want us to enforce this? Um, 
for, uh, enforce around this. And, and we said here, there's a statute that says that you, the board, has to license these kind of events because they're competitions. And that's what you've been doing. And the other piece was, uh, you, you know, this is, a, this is effectively going to become a change in use. Do you want us to, um, you know, say just no, don't let it happen? Or uh, do you want to treat the three as, as one, uh, like a season to, you know, say, yeah. okay, here's, a, here's an event that somebody had on their private property. If it's going to continue, then it needs a, you know, change in use. And your, your guidance to us was, yeah, treat the three like one. We want to hear about every, you know, in terms of licensing, uh, and then send it to the planning board. So that's that's how we got to this point. Mm -hmm. um, that you may have started on the site plan process already. I don't know. I, I'm, in the, I'm, the, I'm in the process you, you of start, right, So they've started that um, concurrent with I haven't your, contacted. Your I haven't contacted the planning board yet. I'm trying to get the site plan in order. Yeah, so there's... There's a you know the, the planning board process we we had uh, given what you told us we said okay let's do that over the winter before we get into next year's uh, business so um, that's how you got to where you are and you can Chris did, did we overstep our bounds by that I mean I remember we we decided to like I said well we, we uh, said how do, you, how do you want us to enforce three this? times right um, and yeah you could you could make a case that that was stretching it you know that, that's, that's a fair point. Um, and, and we said, hey, do you, how do you want, how do you want us to, you know, you, you dictate enforcement as, as the select board. And we said, you know, you want us to shut this thing down before it ever gets off the ground? What do you, you know, what, what's your, you know, how, how fast do you want to bend over to, to help them do this? And um, so that's what we did. Mm -hmm. uh, all, all along thinking this was a, a, this season was an event, so to speak. And, um, and then we hand it to the planning board for site plan approval. I mean, I, I think we, looking at the letter from this planning board, I think we did overstep our bounds. And I, I do think we tried to do it out of, um, you know, a spirit of, you know, cooperation and, and supporting. But um, uh, I think we were also rushed to make a decision. And I don't think we did ourselves any favor by being rushed into that decision, is how I feel. What's the date for the next event? The next event, the date. 26th to the 27th. Mm -hmm. I mean, if their, if their definition, their interpretation of a commercial event is correct, then Perhaps we overstepped our bounds, but but I mean, is, I don't know. Is that there anything in the town right now? Say, if Tammy wanted to just have a private party and invite people to do whatever out on the pond or whatever, do we have any jurisdiction to go there and say you can't do this? I don't. No, that's what I, that's what I mean. I mean. At least I mean they came. They it's, came it's to the, the town. It's when the use of the. I, in my understanding, I don't know, but, uh, it's when the use of the property changes, like a a, a one-time party. No, oh, you know. Yeah. I mean, over that it's private property do what you want uh, it's when the use of the property changes and what the planning board is saying is that it has changed by doing it repeatedly it has changed if we just got this today so <laughs> yeah um, yeah again it's we haven't had any legal again it's we'll take it, a peek it, it, it's <laughs> make a quick decision right yeah um i'm sorry what were the dates on the next one um, it's the event is the 26th and the 27th, and the practice is Friday the 25th. And we have, do you have two more planning board meetings? Yeah, we, we told you early in this process that this would never happen in time. The site plan process takes way too long to, yep. you know, yep. that, the, the, the event, if you, had, if you had said go to the planning board from day one, this event never would have, would have happened. But the time so, just wasn't there. Aside from this particular event, uh, you know, someone had brought up that if someone wanted to have a large family reunion where there's, they're going to have a concert there, and so, but it turns into a yearly family union, uh, reunion event. Isn't that all under the same? Well, you're not charging a mission to your family. Yeah, I think the, the okay. terminology yeah, is the commercial event. Yeah. It's a commercial event. 
So if they were to say, well, we accept donations and the donations will go towards whatever, does that change the, uh, the event? What if they buy it? Hold on, hold on. No, I'm just throwing things out there. Uh, I'm not saying I'm advocating for one or the other. I'm just throwing stuff out there for topics of discussion. So you'll have your moment, sir. Uh, okay. Anyway, we, we've already agreed on letting them have three this year. Right? They got one more to go. You have, yeah, I mean, you've, you've agreed with the theory, with the understanding that you would get a chance to revisit it after each one. So we've only licensed the right. two that have happened. You have not licensed the third one. What is the legal ramifications if we were to con well, approve <coughs> this third one as it sits right now? I don't, well, it, they, the event would presumably go forward. Um, I'm concerned with the planning board. I don't know how I would advise the planning board if they wanted to try and stop it. And how does this, um, the issue where they're saying that it's changing into a commercial use, different from the fact that it's an operating gravel pit where sand is sold and materials are sold, also a commercial activity? Different, different types of activity with different impacts on the, the, the surrounding area and the property itself. Okay, I'll come back to that question. <clears throat> but you could, you could, you know, start a pig farm there because you have a gravel pit there. They're both commercial operations, but they're different. So. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, and also understanding just that with that different use, it's for these limited events that we've planned. So, of course. Hopefully they could see it differently. That'll all be part of the site process for the planning board. You were talking about how often is it going to be used this way and what are the impacts on that? Is, is there a way that we could come t to maybe some sort of compromise here? Uh, I mean, does it have to be three days? I, I, I don't think the number of days matters. Well, it's a noise level, and people, I, what I hear from the f folks that are out there, the complaints is that, you know, it takes up the entire weekend, it ruins their weekend. But, but if you shorten it to one day, I mean, could that satisfy? But then I, I, I read that, you know, they, they, they change their events for next year for one in the spring, one in the summer, and one in the, in the fall, and that seems like a decent compromise. What can we do to show that Nottingham does support, to a point, uh, business? Well, it's not a business. And also it's not a business. support. Oh, it's, a fun, it, it's not. It's not a business that contri is contributing taxes. So it's not. You can't put it on the same par as like. She's a property or. owner. She pay taxes. Pay Sixteen thousand dollars a year to Nottingham. You do. You do. But Liars Paradise is paying. You know, taxes as being a business in town. You're not paying for the watercross event as a business. Oh no, but I am for the Nottingham no, no. gravel. Okay. All right. Just because everybody keeps on saying that it's residential, it's not. That lot 10 is No, commercial. you'll have your, you'll have your moment, business. sir. So Ben, my Lot 8 is residential where I live. There's two lots. So Ben, my my understanding though is because we have no noise ordinance. Right. Though maybe we should, we don't in Nottingham, so it's not a matter of the noise. Cuz we have no authority. But that's the biggest complaint. It is the biggest complaint except for the concerns raised by the planning committee. How many complaints Pla were there? Can, can I just finish, except oh, for the sorry. complaints about the planning board, and again, in my mind, the fact that, you know, we've got number of attendee creep, which is... A number know, what? I'm sorry. Attendee creep. Okay. And something else I was thinking, or if we're talking about, you know, we'd really like to keep this event scheduled, um, but is there a way, if this board does have jurisdiction or authority to do singular events, can we sort of reclassify this? This is the last event here. And of course, next year before anything was to go forward, it would be after the site and the planning board. But, you know, this, it's not like we have two left, we just have one. And, and if that's, 
can be classified as a single singular event. But we're treating the entire season as a single event, which according to that's what well, we, yeah, but according to learning experience, it seems you know now we know. But into how we issue the permit for this, we can dictate the changes that we want to it. So if the hours are too long or something like this, there are changes that we can make to the permit. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add to that? Steve, can Steve speak? Uh, um, oh, we're good. We'll, we'll get to him. Yeah. But you, you folks are all set. Mm -hmm. All right. Nope. Actually, the gentleman in the back. Want. Gentleman in the back had okay. a question first. So yeah, if, if you can just come up and he needs to come up and sit and okay. say his name and speak into the microphone. Thank you. State your full name and address, please. Lee Weldy, one one ten Nottingham Road. And as you talk about the crow's flies, I'm less than eight hundred feet from the pit. Um. You mentioned Liars Paradise. Up until two weeks ago, they had a week-to-week -week car show. They had probably 50 to 75 cars there. Do they come for a permit every week? I don't think so. They probably don't have a site plan review to use Jimmy's, uh, Jimmy's mother's property to put cars on the property. That, that's not for a car show. That wasn't for display. They have speakers, music playing. They block, they cone the road off. They don't have a detail officer there. So when you start looking at all this, you've got a way you can't single out one business and let another do something that, that Liars Paradise is a store and pizza place. I understand what they do. Their foundation of the car show is a fundraiser for it. They charge a fee. People pay to go in there. They play music. They have cars lined up. They have spectators walking through there. People sell parts. They are more than they more they've exceeded what that store's permitted use is so if you're going to target a particular business you might want to think about how you're going to do it because they have a weekly car show every Tuesday night through the whole summer I understand they shut down because of an issue but that being said I've talked to every duty officer that's been there I've talked to um, the lieutenant who was there last time she asked us about the ticket count and I think we came up closer with it I've been to every event I've I've sat on my steps and the cars going by my house with my decibel meter a louder than the sleds going on the pond motorcycles going by at 98 decibels the highest I've had at my house is 86 yes noise travels I hear Lee Speedway I hear Star Speedway I hear New England Dragway and I'm up on the hill so I get the noise I, it's a drone you go out on the, you go out on the lake you got the boats on the lake I can hear them yeah I can hear the fireworks from Pawtuckaway it abets the back side of my property I'm not I do not have a problem with what's going on down the pit as far as noise I'm a strong supporter of it I believe that they have a right to use their property if they wanted to if they wanted to circumvent it and, and say it was a, a family gathering as you were talking about or an event or whatever there's there are other avenues that they could pursue but they're being forward they're coming through to you to talk and ask for permission and guidance through it they've agreed they'll go to the planning board they'll address what the issues are whatever whatever they, they, they I'm sure she's got to do she's a good neighbor always has been I've lived on this road I've lived in Raymond since 77 and I can tell you when Pike was running that drag line at 4.30 in the morning and they fired that 671 Detroit up, screaming, I heard it. Their trucks coming down the hill with their engine brakes, I heard it. That was every single day of the week. That pit can operate every single day of the week. They were going in there seven days a week hauling sand out of there. So a two-day event, I, I can tell you right now, the, the owners of the property, I don't even hear their backup alarms now, okay? But used to be able to hear everything Pike did. That banging and clanging with that drag line going across, pulling the sand out of the pit, their loaders and everything. That was a seven day a week job that they ran out of that place. So two days, once a month, doesn't bother me a bit. I hear the boats on the lake. Do I come in here and complain about them? No. It's a recreation. Nottingham's primary function, excluding the. Um, bedroom town community is recreation at Pawtuckaway up on the lake all the boats 
do you get you had complaints about the snowmobiles on the lake at, in the summer in the winter time and then and they go out there they run the trails midnight one o'clock in the morning so I don't think the six to uh, the ten to six is an issue that's my two points okay. thank you thank you Please state your name. Uh, my name is Steve Reynolds. I'm the event organizer. My address is 99 Micah Terrace. Um, what town? I'm in Milton, New Hampshire. Okay. Um, Lee touched on a lot of stuff that I was going to touch on, so I'll cut that stuff out. Um, like Donna said, it's loud. Absolutely, it's loud. There, there's no argument with that. And everybody here tonight, I'm 99% sure nobody's against it. You're going to have people for it. I mean, you're going to have people against it. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you do in life. There's going to be people against it. Mm -hmm. We had 700 plus people for it. You're always, it doesn't matter what we do. We could quiet the sleds down. We could make them go the opposite direction. We could make up, you can shorten the schedule. It doesn't matter. Those people that complain, I'm willing to bet, are the same people that complain about everything else. So if there were 700 people for it, plus, if you look at the Nottingham Facebook pages since our last board meeting, Kathy that st sat right here almost in tears against it, it, Tammy went over there, talked to her, everybody get on the same page. You guys asked us to notify the town within, I think, 1,500 yards. We did 2,500, whatever. I think it was a mile and a half. You're always going to have people against it. It doesn't matter. Like you, there's, people are against the color of this building. Like I've just said, it's people complain. You go to Dunkin' Donuts at six o'clock in the morning. Those people that all sit in the corner and they talk about Kathy's dog <coughs> sitting on their fence or whatever. Those are the people. It's always going to happen. I don't want to battle. Like I felt attacked last meeting, so I just Tammy and I we let the locals know. We said, hey, we were outnumbered last meeting of a few people that were against it, and they're like, oh heck no, that ain't going to happen again. So they all came to show their support of this event. You had 700 plus people for the event, at the event. You got how many people here tonight? Where are the complainers? You guys were just talking about what day do we have? Well, Mr. Reynolds, we don't want to turn this into an antagonistic meeting here where, you know, the people that support it versus the, some folks at home maybe be watching this are, are against it. Yep, I understand okay. that. If you want to continue to have your, your meets and all that stuff, we have to find common ground, uh, you know, in civil civility. Yes, okay. and, we, and from the beginning, our rate, like our racing, you, like normally, it takes us from nine o'clock to seven o'clock. We've compromised and shortened those days up. And to, to answer your question, you guys asked, like, oh, can we compromise and shorten the days? As you know, we got rain on the last Sunday. Mm -hmm. We go bell to bell, and we like it looks like scurrying mice in the pits. Like we barely have enough time. People miss classes. People miss heats just to accommodate this town. Like you guys ask us to do certain things and we're like, you know, doing, we're doing our best to accom accommodate the people that are against it, but we can only go so far. So if every single time one person comes to complain, something else is added, it's just going to drive it right out until it's, it's nothing else. Hey, Steve, um, the permit for the 14th said 500 to 700 and you guys keep saying 700 plus. How? Yeah. If we approved it and gave you a number, how would you limit it to that number of people that the permit approved? So like Tammy said, and, and I think it's a very, very, very valid point. The number, like you say sound's the biggest complaint, right? That's no, 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 I'm just, sound, put sound aside. Yep. The sound is obnoxious and annoying, but there's no sound ordinance in Nottingham, so we can't do anything about that, Okay. right? My concerns are adherence to the permit and whether or not this board really has authority to agree to this based on what the planning board has raised concern about. So what I'm asking you is, first I saw an email that said there were 1,500 people. So apparently that was a miscalculation of the numbers. But if the permit says 500 to 700 across three days, how would you limit it to that number? You can't, to be honest. Okay, so I mean. Yes, but hold on. The permit never said we demand that these numbers, from day one you guys asked us how many. We have food trucks and vendors and stuff. They ask us the same question. Tammy, Tammy's brand new to this. She asked me in the beginning. She goes, how many people are going to show up at my house? 
I can't rub a genie ball and say, hey, do you guys know how many people are going to come to the board meeting tonight? You can't, you can't like predict that. But there's never been a problem with volume of people. That hasn't phased anything. So to, to stru like, you know, kind of back us into a corner on spectator count, it doesn't do anything for the town and it doesn't do it does nothing to the town and it does nothing but hurt us you know what i mean so the number of spectators does nothing to disrupt the town we haven't had one car go out onto the main road the, when i first came in here the biggest dispute was traffic oh my god there's going to be traffic there wasn't one car that went out onto the main road then we wanted a second detail because of the number of people that were there the detail was there for traffic then when there was no traffic it was almost like Oh, let's defer it. Let's say it's because of the number of people. Like, so you, I get where the town's coming from. There's going to be people for it. There's going to be people against it. But not put yourself on our side. You guys are putting these limitations and restrictions in place saying, let's have this stuff for these reasons. And when those reasons don't exist, oh, let's change it now. Let's say it's because of this. You know what I mean? So I think that's, an, I think that's an unfair statement. But to answer your question, I can't, tell, like, I can't predict the number of people that come. If people drive from five minutes away or five hours away, you know, to have them get there and say, oh, we reach, reached our limit. Sorry, you got to turn around and go home. You advertise the event. Just out of curiosity, what happens if something goes wrong? Who's to blame? In what aspect? Uh, hypothetical, anything. Accidents happen every day. Again, uh, but I'm we, just have, we have $2 million insurance. You can't. It, this is life like this is what this whole world's turning into like people that are like soft people that are against things like there's gonna be complainers yeah but I, you, you you gotta understand we have a responsibility to the town yes i understand that so your town like and, and again I, i'm not i'm not i don't i want you guys to want me here i want the town to want me here i know there's gonna people that be people that don't like it on a board of six people i guarantee you there's gonna be board members that are for it and against it that's life but what i don't want is just because a couple people don't like it, ruin it for the whole world. I don't like the color purple, but I can't say, hey, no purple allowed in the town. I know that's a drastic comparison, but that's what it's turning into. So if you were to base your, base your decision off tonight, off the people that are in the room, I mean, everybody's for it. Where are they? If you were to base your decision on the number of complaints versus the number of spectators, like, Unanimously, you guys were selected by the town. Unanimously, the town is saying, make this event happen. So you're saying, represent the town. The town, for the majority, is saying, let it happen. And you guys said from the get-go, let's get these three events out of the way, and then we'll revisit it before the planning board. But you said, let us hold on to these permits just to you know, kind of keep tabs on things and make adjustments as we go. You didn't say, let's hold on to these to cancel the last one. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add, Mr. Um, well, and can I add, um, from when you first came in, and again, you know, I'm not against your program. My brother was there last I understand week. That. I understand that. there's so going to be people that are. I'm going to bring up my own, what I feel is necessary to bring up. Yep. So um, when you first came in, you know, I've been at all these, you know, this was the water cross. You know, you have your drags, you have this. Now, as I'm reading here, looking right here at the Facebook page, now we're having a swap meet, uh, which I take it's the selling and buying of snowmobiles and people are going to bring trailers and stuff like this. Again, nothing to do with water cross. This is just, now this is a swap meet. And I've been around New England enough, I've seen enough swap meets for snowmobiles and yep. what people have done. And then we're also now making this a camping event. It's bad. Because it says, well, from day one, there's been camping. There's people that drive. RVs. From specifically said there's no tents allowed but again i'm just saying that you're not specifying that on here that we have advertisements added. i can add that if you like is that if that's what i'm just and again it's yeah. just because you might have people when it says camping people might just come and they they might just bring their pickup truck and have their tents out back and everything We've i'm had, reading the facebook post yeah. not towards what you're advertising i'm just seeing right here it's on the facebook it says camping yep. now i think of camping as having a campfire drinking beers and you know having my tent Having a good time? Yeah, yeah. Hey, again, I'm not against camping. But again, I'm just saying that, that was not originally part of what your 
original plan was when you were here when i came in the first time we that was touched on that there would be camping it was dry camping only and you specifically said from day one no tents and we haven't had tents since day but again one. i'm i'm, I'm, I'm just specifying that, that was, on, no, on we'll it's just, here. Here. It just we'll camping no nope. it doesn't say specific now i'm just well, being aware of that when people come you know are you, you ready to turn those people away well that you can't camp here with your tent well, the tents, yes, and they made it. They made it aware tonight. They're like, "Hey, we should add this to the website just because." You're not wrong. I, no, I agree. That's all. That's why I'm bringing it up. No, I agree. We've you touched on so. it tonight, and I agree a thousand percent. But the, that keeping the website up to date, as well as this, as well as my personal, like, there's so much going on. They're important. They're very important. But we've never had a like a, an issue with it, so it just wasn't put high on the priority list. But I agree that I could add that easily. Just the no tense part. Just something to be aware. No one wants to be the bad guy and turn people away. I, I agree. Tony? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can understand noise concerns and, and I get the closer you are, the louder it's gonna be. Um, but also, you know, I think, you know, this this has been a learning process for all of us. It has. And as of yet, you know, I think Tammy and um, Steve have abided by every restriction that we've put on them, you know, every condition um, as we as we all try to figure this out. Um, so other than the issue of figuring out whether or not we have the authority to authorize this, I, I don't have a problem with with proceeding with the third event. Um, you know, I do think we need to get on the same page as the planning board. Um, you know, their, their letter specifies map 69, lot 10, um, and Tammy pointed out that it's actually lot eight, which is commercial. So maybe that would have changed, maybe that would have made a difference to the planning board, you know, Chairman Dirk, if he had, um, if he had the correct information, uh, maybe we wouldn't have got this letter. So I definitely think we got to check in with, with them and make sure that we're all on the same page as in terms of intent, you know, what, it, what is it we're looking to do here? Um, But beyond that, I, 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 I wouldn't have a problem with allowing it to proceed. And I, I hold sorry. on, Tyler. I just want everybody to weigh in. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I wish they'd have synchronized swimming too, but. <laughs> 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 um, no, I, same thing. I think it's like I said, we, they came in here, and I, again, I know the first one was rushed and probably wasn't the best way to start something off. Um, but I mean, the one thing I'll say, we, we, we did agree, all of us, though, too, that this will never become Fremont. So I don't mean that. I mean, it seems like it's getting bigger, but which I, I think it's good for people to come to Nottingham and hopefully spend some of their money at Liars Paradise or, or wherever. Um, but, but again, I'm, I sat on the planning board as well, so I, you know, I kind of want to stay neutral, but I believe you know, I agree. I think we should let them finish the season. Okay. How big is the pond? Oh, it's more than big enough for synchronized swimming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just to bring to a point uh, what he just said, yeah, the fact of it getting bigger, you know, part of the thing was it not to become a Fremont. Um, you know, and again, that's something to think about, but I think when this actually, by these three events, the planning board should have enough information when they go to their session, and they're going to be tough. I told them from the beginning. I do live on the Abiding Park. Um, oh yeah. Um, oh, I'm good. I think. I don't but, want them. But I'm just going to say they're going to be tough. <laughs> so by having three of them, it separates it out. Not yeah. One again, one time it will be it could, after this event. It's going to be out of our hands almost. Right. So. Well, the difference between Maybe. what you folks are doing and what. Fremont is doing it. Thousands of people. But again, you know, I only, I only bring up that one thing too is the fact that now there's a swap event that's going on there, so that might be uh, bring other people than spectators to what the the water cross is going. Ben, can I just? Can I say? Hold on, hold on, hold on. 
Go ahead, Can I just summarize my feelings on this? Um, I'm not against the event at all. I, I love having fun too, right? Not against it at all. Don't like the noise, but there's nothing I can do about that, right? Um, what I'm concerned about is that I'm concerned about this board legally doing the right thing and overstepping our bounds or not. And all of this has been at the last minute. The letter from the planning board we got today. And so again, we're being asked to make a decision without having the opportunity to consult with the planning board. And, and again, my biggest concern, not against the event at all, just concerned about this board behaving in the way that it should and doing the things that it should and not the things that it shouldn't. Can I say one thing? No. My neighbor up back, Arnie James, almost 45 acres behind me, just said that the swap meet has to be on his property. That has nothing to do with what I just said. Uh, what I just said was about the board, not the I event. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I was just throwing it out there. Yeah. He, is, he owns 50 acres behind my 90. So it's his... Is this the acres in a different property? town? And he drives through my property to get to his. It's in a different town? No, he's in Ireland. Oh, is he? Okay. Uh, uh. I know. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, okay. You know, something else for us to be conscious of, too. I mean, it was brought up how, you know, Liars has a similar type event when they have the car shows. So whatever we put in place for process licensing whatever whether it's us or the planning board we've got to make sure that it's applied equally and that was an equitably excellent point. i hadn't yeah. considered that that's yeah. an excellent point yeah yeah you know we have to apply it fairly across the whole town and, and i'm not saying that we need to regulate every single little thing that happens in town again it's <clears throat> this board and the behavior right. of this board that i'm concerned about that would be my, like I said, my major concern right now, too, yeah. is make sure that we're acting within our authority. So we definitely got to touch base. Touch base with uh, Dirk. Yeah. Well, so the lot that we're actually, so. he's talking about is a residential, and the lot that it's actually on is on the commercial side. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I yeah, I, I don't think we should vote on the permit tonight until we've had a chance to Hold on, sir. get in with um with planning board with the chairman you know and would there be receptive in coming to the next meeting i mean now we're cutting it close here but i would think so but um we should, well, i'll reach out to him i mean you're, I don't know, when, when do they meet next you have a direct link already so yeah no i had a, it's next wednesday i believe so i mean i don't know maybe the select board can go there as well okay i just don't oh again it's not going to be fair for us to delay this out if the, if the planning board you know we, is not willing to make or, or compromise on it or do anything that night then it's going to come still back to well, us can again. we get can we get legal advice chris um because i think we should let them know as, as quick as possible no, I agree. I you got, you I guys agree. are you guys ask us to make preparations, precautions, but like get get the word out there. There's a lot that goes into it, and the biggest hurdle the entire time has been being rushed, and that's what it comes down to is being rushed. I posted. I, I, I get that, Steve, but you also I understand. understand you, I understand. You gonna let me talk? Yep. Okay. The legality that we are facing as a board, you know, we don't want to be in a position where we're overstepping the planning board. Okay, and that's what we're talking about is trying to figure out the legality of that. I understand. Why, I understand. That's why we want to have get legal advice and all that stuff. I mean, not listen. Just as Donna said, I'm in support of this as well. It's just we got to make sure we dot our eyes and cross our t's and make sure everything's above board and it's legal. I understand that a thousand percent. What I was trying to say is, before we came to Nottingham, we were in Baldwin, Maine. Baldwin, mm -hmm. Maine actually doesn't have one business in the entire town. They're an Amish town. When I walked in there, same thing happened, and this is very. Um, pertinent to what's going on their planning board their select board they're like what the like there's no rules in place there's nothing there's no there's there's nothing in place to abide by that so what happened in that town and i won't speak for this town is you know you guys are overstepping your boundaries there was no boundaries to overstep because there weren't rules or policies in place so what it came down to in that town which it i'm just saying mm -hmm. it turned into the planning board was against it and the select board was for it the planning board looked at the select board and I mean the planning board I mean the select board looked at the planning board and said your job your duty is to uphold policies 
our du duty is to represent the town and delegate what goes on, what doesn't, et cetera. I don't know if that's the case here. But well, I'm just we, saying, we would I, need legal advice. We would I, need our lawyers to tell us who has the authority. I understand that's that a thousand percent, and I'm sorry he doesn't have a name tag, but like he said. Chris. Chris, sorry. That stuff's gonna take time. And what I'm afraid of is this next meeting that we go to, the planning board and the select board still can't decide. And we're all stuck, you know, what do we do? I'm advertising for it because you guys want, you don't want it rushed, you want the word out there. I've already started advertising for it, making small preparations, but there's financial preparations that go into it. I understand. It. I understand so, the problem is hasty decisions on the part of any board can turn into a lawsuit against the town. Uh, you, do you accept the premise that this just isn't allowed? generally like you, you couldn't just all of a sudden run these three events every year without some a thousand percent that's why we're here you accept the premise that the government has some role in approving a three and three day event something or other you you if you accept that premise you have to accept that that doesn't happen quickly and it 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 definitely doesn't happen quickly when you don't approach the town with with the concept that, yep. you, that you let it let the town find out about it through a back door 10 days before it happens okay. so your your inconvenience is a concern they've been these this board has really bent over quite a bit to mollify your inconveniences despite the the, the fact that they have to approve all this stuff so if you accept the fact that the government has to regulate it somehow you're going to have to let the government work its way through it what, what I meant by that is I it doesn't happen and I understand that a thousand percent and I accept the fact that it's an inconvenience but where's Don here how long has Northwood been going on since 1972 have they ever been before the town no okay Northwood's been going on since the 1970s okay that's Northwood that's not right. I, under, I understand I'm set hold on I'm accepting I'm admitting like I'm accepting that there's an inconvenience I that's why I'm here because just like Baldwin, I want the town to be aware and I want to be on the same page. I don't want to be caught off guard. Just so you guys know and you're aware, Epping is actually the same way. Epping never went to the town. And again, we're not Epping, we're not Northwood, but we, this is a sport. And we've been doing what every other venue has been doing since day one. I'm the first person to go before a town and say, do you guys mind if we have this happen? If you call the New Hampshire Fish and Game Officer for this area, he'll tell you the same thing. I'm the only one that's come before the town and asked for permission. Epping kind of grandfathered into it. it. It's been going on for decades. So it just became a normal thing. Northwood, the same thing. I came before the town and said, hey, can this happen? And now it's shooting me in the foot. A lot of people said, don't go to the town. Oh, no, 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 no. The, no. the town came to you and said, hey, what the hell's going on? We're no, the fishing game, no, no, no. Fish and game beat me to Fish and game beat me to you guys. It wasn't you got like you know what I'm saying? I don't I, I don't and I, I don't want this to turn into a battle. When I first came in here, basically we I mean if we go back on the YouTubes, it was pretty much an agreement. We'll get through this summer and you guys go before the planning board. We're asking for this the last event and then you guys wash your hands of it and we understand the planning board's gonna be tough. We understand that they may not approve it, we may not be back next year. But in order for us to do what we need to do, we're just asking, and by we, I mean everybody in this room tonight, is asking for the last permit to move forward, and we go forward with the planning board. So we have two options. One option is that this board can make a vote tonight, a yay or nay, yay or nay vote tonight, right? That's one option, in my opinion. You guys might have other options you want to throw out there. The second option is that we ask Chris to get an opinion from the lawyer and that we go to the planning board as a board next Wednesday the 9th is when they meet is that I believe so. I'm gonna, mm -hmm. I'm yes. check real quick we go with legal opinion in hand or we get the opinion from the lawyer that says you guys can make the decision you know but but that we at least try to make a decision for so I'm fine whichever way the board wants to go with either of those options but as I see it those are the two options and I don't know if you guys see any other options what about well, just checking in with the planning board and saying hey information's incorrect it's lot 8 not lot 10 lot 8's commercial does that change your change your algebra any I don't think it will. no because it's the it's the type it's of commercial the, use 
Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's not commercial and not commercial. It's permitted commercial use. Right. I personally think for them to make an honest and educated opinion on the entire thing, they need a lot more information than anything that we can provide them in that short a period of time. So to catch them off guard and say, hey, you guys for this or against it, I have a strong feeling. I don't that. really think they're off guard. They're well aware of the event. I, I, but I don't think they know as much as you guys know and we know, is what I'm saying. John, you want to win? Hey, I'll make a decision right now. What would be your decision if we were to have it right now? I'd say let's give them the permit. Tony? Apart from the legal question, I would say let's give them the permit. Tyler? I'm on the planning board, so I have to, you know. Fair enough. You're, you're, you're the selectman's rep to the planning board, right. so your, your job is to represent this group to them. Right. So you, you're not conflicted in any way. This is, this is your primary job, and that is your secondary job. So. Well, I, okay, then I'll go back to my original thing. I voted, you know, for it. So, I mean, I've just, I, again, I've been going to the planning board, and, you know, they're coming at me, and I don't have the answers for them. So. That's why I mean I thought it desperately needed that we get together and try to say hey we've laid the, the groundwork for they for them to come into you if they want to continue next year. But that's it, that's how soon could we have uh, advice from the attorney if we were to go that route? Days. I would feel better about the whole thing if we got a legal opinion first. We have to come back and make a vote together. Then. I'm for that if that means we can have these folks move their event forward September 9th is the planning board All right. so does that sound fair enough folks where you know we're gonna go get legal advice all right on September gonna, 9th uh, no 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 no, no, no that's what, just what I heard that's what we planning board. now in the meeting on the 9th we'll get a legal opinion and bring that to the planning board so for us to find out on September 9th and turn around and cancel to the people that we've Wait, were we saying that we would? You just asked three of the planning board members, and they all said for it. So was well, there's it? only one planning, well, one representative. Me. I mean, not planning. Sorry, I'm sorry. Where did select board? You basically just started the vote. You went halfway around the room. Half of them said yes, and then you stopped. So I don't want to turn this into an argument. I, I'm just asking that you guys decide whether or not we can move forward with the last event without doing it without permission. Well, this is the question we're weighing. So Are we comfortable? making doing a formal vote on that even though you know a number of us are in principle in favor of it there's that legal question hanging over our heads ben what you were about the legal wait issue. can i hang on a second ben were you proposing that we get legal advice and then go to the planning board on the ninth or were you proposing that we get legal advice and that we can reconvene after we had that legal advice reconvene then, after we have that legal advice so we could have a special meeting on friday yes was what you were suggesting that's what i was suggesting yes and i'm not saying friday specifically i just yep. some at some day on whatever day it is yeah. whatever day it is so that that doesn't yeah, delay this is the just night. to ensure that the board is dotting their i's and crossing their t's i understand that a thousand so percent but you've you, asked us just to do as it. just as chris had pointed out you know the government how it works um it, I would feel better if we had some legal advice and we'll reconvene and make a decision at that point. And I absolutely respect that. I'm not arguing it. I'm just saying that given what you guys are asking of us and then shortening the time frame, it's just... Well, at this point, is a couple of days going to make that much of a difference? A day makes a difference this day and age. So, I mean, we got the letter from the planning board today. Yeah, so you're, I, I you're, you're doing I'm, the same thing to us. You're asking us to make a decision... You know, well, actually, you guys quickly. told us we can move forward with the three events this summer, but we, yeah, Caitlin's actually a prosecuting attorney, so she could speak for me. No, well, wait, 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 hold on. All right, I want. I'm not I, I would like to hear from more people from Nottingham. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. If you're not from Nottingham, I mean, excuse me, just a minute. Sure. I, then I don't. I don't want to. I mean, I want to hear from Nottingham residents first. So. I'm going person. to be very short. I just was hoping that when you do ask for legal advice about your decision um, and what authority you have to make a decision about this event, I would just hope that despite what they find when they're looking at the rules and regulations that this board can follow and say that maybe 
making this choice would not be something typically that the board had authority to do. I think that it would just be important for the legal counsel to understand and this board maybe to make some sort of exception here because even though you know these decisions about these prior events so far were rushed and quick turnaround, um, they were made by this board during these public meetings and we've relied on them. Um, and it could be to our detriment if we aren't able to move forward with the last event. And although maybe that wouldn't be the way that to go forward doing things from now on, like we've said lots of times tonight, this is a learning experience. And I think that it would just be important for legal counsel to understand that it's not like this is the first time you're making this decision and we can make a clean cut, this decision can be made or not, but that we have this sort of ongoing thing beforehand. And I'm sure they would understand that, but I just wanna make sure that um, they know that. And that's all I wanted to make sure when it comes to that part of the decision. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else from Nottingham? I, gentleman right there in the head. Okay. I'm just a worker, so I'll let you. I'd like to answer Joan's question if I have a minute. Uh, you'll have time. The man in the yellow shirt. Yeah, I got it. My name's Don McMurray. I'm from 85 Gallon Road, and I've been in town since 71. I, I agree that you should go to legal counsel. I also work with Steve around the boat. I pull him out. And but you know, there's been snowmobile club in Nottingham. I don't know if anyone's aware of that. Years ago, there was a snowmobile that was big in this town. I used to ride to eighth grade on my snowmobile from <laughs> Gallon Road. Okay. But it's all new, and but I kind of agree that you should get legal advice. Okay. As a taxpayer. Thank, Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Go ahead. Come on up, sir. Okay. No, I'm not here. Fred Jackson, 129 Highland Avenue. I've been here for most of my 60 years on Pawtucket Way Lake. Um, as a crow flies, probably about the same distance that you are. Um, I find the noise just kind of white noise. I find it nothing like Memorial Day weekend or the two weeks surrounding July 4th where I'm getting fireworks at 2 o'clock in the morning or even Labor Day weekend. Um, I've been to the event. Uh, I find it incredibly well put together. There's no traffic. You drive by on 156, you don't even know there's something going on down there. Unless you see somebody pulling with a trailer with snowmobiles on it. Um, so I don't. I just don't get any impact from the noise. Thank you. Thank you. I believe there was a lady in the back that. Hi, I'm Jennifer Dubois. I live at 25 Lincoln Drive in Nottingham. I've been a spectator for over 10 years, a photographer for seven years for the water cross. Um, I brought my nephew, my family members, my mom, my dad, they all love it. Um, I understand noise ordinance in town. I've had a few problems in myself, having you know a few parties, things like that. I get that there's no ordinance. You really, and I try to be respectful of my neighbors. I was just, had a few friends over sighting their guns in, let my neighbors know. They were like, all right, no problem. Just wanted to let you guys know as we're shooting in the afternoon on Sunday. And they said, okay, great. No one was called, no problems. It was great. I've, you know, I've been here since 05. Um, I think you guys need to do whatever you need to do legal-wise. I can't speak for you, obviously. I don't know what is involved with the planning board and everything else. Um, but I'm a huge supporter of these guys, community, family. <laughs> I've known them all for years, um, and they have bent over backwards. And I know you guys have, you know, equally done some stuff for them, but. I'd really like to see this go forward, um, mostly because I want to bring my grandson <laughs> to the last race. Um, but um, yeah, that's it. I mean, I'm definitely for it. Um, I know a few of you guys, actually. I know Tyler. Our kids went to school together. I mean, I know like half the people in this room. And I know most of us are for it. So um, I hope you guys uh, end up proving it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else from Nottingham? Ma'am? Hi, my name's Jennifer Menard. I live at 166 Raymond Road. Um, I've been down there, and there may have been 750 people, but not all at once. People are coming in, people are going out. So it may have been how many ticket sales they had, but when you go down there, it's not overcrowded. I mean, I see it's a family event, and in this day and age, we need something for the families to go to. Mm -hmm. 
and you know what they're doing for like the food pantry donation for the food pantry that's a plus since we lost the one at liars they're trying to do positive for our town and instead of the few or I don't even want to say complaints I'm sorry to bring that up but this is the whole thing other than noise which we can't do anything about because there's no or ordinance on it we've never had this before so nobody we're all in this blind we've never had to deal with anything like this so there's no rulings at all so this is going to be a learning curve for all of us but it's a positive function going on and our town needs positive because there's been enough negative so i truly believe that you should go forward and give them the permit and you know contact your attorneys but there's been no precedent set before now never happened before so what are they going to base it on <coughs> thank you for hearing me thank, thank you. you thank you anybody else from nottingham sir you're not from nottingham but but you're welcome to speak now thank you my name is dave Pino, and i work for tammy during the event and i'd like to answer mr mormon's question about hypothetically what if something happened uh, most of the volunteers that work for tammy okay are veterans veterans look at this as a very highly thing i have had five years training uh, in the united states army uh, as a military policeman i'm in charge of some of the security parking cars whatnot and so forth there's a couple of veterans back there that have different mos's uh, we've all been well equipped with you know safety hazards and whatnot and so forth uh, we're not just a bunch of guys out there just trying to do something um, and we volunteered to help Tammy. So in case something happens, we do have a little bit of training that maybe can help things down. We're just not a bunch of guys out there drinking beer. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Last one. Come. Again, we will do 110 Nottingham Road. Um, two things of procedure tonight that I'll bring up. You guys started a vote. You had three votes on your board. No one made an amendment or made a motion to, um... That was a poll, not a vote. There was no motion made to take a vote. You guys vote. were voting, but... Wasn't okay, we'll, 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 we'll go with that. You guys started a vote and you were in favor of it. So, with that, you then said the planning board. This event has been going on for two months and you talked about being rushed. You got a letter today. Now you want, really want to talk about being rushed? You have brought it up at the planning board meeting. It's been discussed. They came here tonight for the permit expecting that you know uh, the discussions had been had at the planning board and if any other questions needed to be addressed at that point I believe that the planning board should have said that they should have sought legal counsel not you guys for for the event so again I saw three to two or three two you hadn't voted yet and then you you move for legal counsel um, then and at that point things stopped the proceeding so the planning board if they had felt that they had precedence over this situation they should have said on how many meetings have been since the first event they should have addressed it at the set at the meeting after your first event because they knew there were two more coming up so to rush it now you're going to delay these people that much longer waiting for legal counsel who knows how long it's going to be because i can tell you with the state being shut down and you know uh, New Hampshire um, Municipal um, Association trying to get through to them um, I know how hot it is even when they're open sometimes to get a, get a call back so I think that you're not doing them a just sir you're not doing them just service by holding the permit till you talk to the planning board and then the planning board is going to seek counsel you're probably going to give them the approval the Thursday before the event and it might as well not happen so I think you need to, I think you need to issue the permit or vote on finish the vote on the permit and, and go forward okay what, what I was proposing I'm sorry what was your name again Lee Weldy I, like I, said, I live right across the street on the last house before you hit Nottingham okay what we were proposed or what I was suggesting is that we seek legal counsel and then reconvene whether that's on a Friday or Thursday after yeah. receiving that and making a decision at that point we weren't saying that the board the planning board to go get legal advice we're talking about the board oh, I understand ensure, you were looking we're for the legal ones counsel. approving this permit yep okay and I want to ensure as I mentioned already that we're dotting our eyes crossing a T's and we're all above board mm -hmm. okay 
Um, as someone pointed out earlier, we don't need to be into a, a legal matter, a lawsuit, whether it's the planning board or, or a resident of a town, you know, uh, bringing a lawsuit against the town. And uh, that's the last thing we, we, we really want to, we want to try to avoid that as much as possible. But also, you know, I, I'm pretty sure I can speak for everybody here. We are generally in support of the event. We just want to make sure that we are going to be doing things the legal way. So if you could just give us a couple of days to speak to the legal counsel, we'll reconvene later this week and go from there. How will you notify the abutters that are here tonight that that's going to happen so we can come back? All meetings are posted. They're posted on the website. They're posted. My on point. The, on the door. They're you're, posted. You're, this was posted. This this event, this was posted, and, and, and you got a letter the same day of the event. Planning board probably should have had representation or the, or the chairman should have been here to address these issues. Could have. Okay, so you, you posted this, I'm sure, legally in, three, in, in two, two places, plus online. So I'm here. sorry, I'm missing your point on that. He's not here. Oh, I know, but I'm, I'm a planning board member. Yeah, and I'm, I'm saying the I'm chairman here, of the so. planning board should have been here to address these issues with the concerns, no different than the, no different than the residents or the abutters. Thank you. Can okay. I just ask one question to the planning board? What, what do I have to go up there? Yep. What makes an event an event just charging people to come in? I'm sorry, what was your question? What makes it an event just charging spectate? Uh, I think their whole thing is the land use. I'm, I'm just asking, what makes it an event? What, what puts you here for, for the license that we've talked about all along? is RSA 286 colon 1, which says that no shown tumbler, rope dancer, ventriloquist, or <laughs> other person <laughs> really helpful <laughs> uh, shall for pay exhibit any feats of agility, horsemanship, sleight of hand, rope dancing, or feats with cards or any animals, wax figures, puppets, or other show, uh, or promote any public competition without license yeah. from the select. Like so, hold on. From who? From the, the license comes from the selectmen of the town. Okay. So that's that's what puts you here. Okay. There's a whole body of other regulations in the zoning ordinance that will speak to the land use question. Okay. So if there was a totally free, Got totally free, come hang out. If it wasn't a competition and it wasn't for pay, then we could have a conversation about whether it needed a license or not. And it becomes a practice. So if it's totally free. Right. Well, it's, nothing, it's no different than liars. They get, they get trophies and they pay. I'm just, I'm just, you set precedents to lie, allow liars to run you. Now, now that you've established what it is and that it's, it's a competition. competition with heats and all that stuff, we're not going to believe that. You know, from an enforcement point of view, we're not going to believe that suddenly it isn't. I'm not disagreeing with that. I was just saying if it was totally free, is it still considered? That doesn't, doesn't matter. It's the competition. And it's two things. It's pay and competition. As we read the statute, okay. pay and competition yeah. it makes it subject to a license. I'd really, like, and I'll just end it with this, I'd really appreciate a permit tonight. But like you said, you guys are asking for time. We're asking for time too. So whatever you guys have to decide is what you have to decide. But I was told at the beginning of this that we'd move forward with th these three events and we'd have to go before the planning board and ask for I mean, future permission. The Chris speaks for you know on our behalf and, and on the town's behalf to the attorney all the time it's not like he's going to call the attorney and then 10 days from now the guy's going to call him back he's going to tell him this is important he'll probably get back to him in the same day i would imagine i'm just speaking from 26 yeah. select meetings in another town and we never went racing yeah. that's wrong that, that's the only experience i have besides these two previous but i appreciate you guys this time your job it's not easy i understand where you're coming from you have a lot of the town for it, and I don't think anybody in this building tonight is against it. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Did we ever ask, is there anybody here against it tonight? Or? Doesn't look like there is, but I'll ask, is there anybody here that's against it? <laughs> <laughs> and that wants to speak. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, you, you've heard, we've heard complaints. You've, yeah. you've seen everything we've yeah. heard, so. 
It's called stacking a meeting. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that ends the discussion on the on this. Um, we will, uh, so Chris, you'll attend to reach the attorney tomorrow and let us know. Um, yep. We're going to vote on making a decision whether that's the action we want to go with. Yeah, because we didn't. We, this is an open discussion. Mm -hmm. And part fair of the, part fair of the fair things enough. we had the thing is which fair way enough. we want to go fair and make a vote on that. Yeah, yeah, fair okay. enough. Okay, folks. So you, we, we want to have a discussion on the, getting advice from an attorney. Is that what you're saying? Well. When we first started, there was a, an idea of we were either going to say, do we want to make a decision tonight on this, and that's going to take a vote, or do we want to make a decision, do we see the attorney first? Both of those things were going to come down to which way we want to vote. So if you're going to ask the board, I believe you should be asking the board, do we have a motion to, or something to say, we're going to see the attorney in that pending approval of what the attorney says, which I don't like that. Um, you know, or do we just vote for right now? I mean, we should have a sense of that's how I don't, we want to go. Yeah, I don't think we need to vote on whether or not we consult the attorney first. Well, somebody, I, I think the way to do it is if somebody feels strongly, they make a motion for the board. You make a motion for the board to approve or deny, right? That, I mean, it comes down to that. Yeah, well, I'll step up and make a motion that we approve the application. For uh, Tammy, I'm going to mess up your last name uh, for the events. <laughs> uh, you know, held uh, for September 27th, 28th. 26th. Sorry, 26th, 27th. I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me. I'm looking at the old one, so. We have a second. Table that one. Good enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have an answer. So, Chris, the fundamental question for the attorney is does RSA 280, was it 286 colon 1? No, our, our, our fundamental legal questions are about uh, more about zoning and the That's enforcement of the zoning ordinance. Yep. Well, uh, you're, you're going to have to, you're going to have to approve a license regardless of what the zoning ordinance says. This could be a parallel approval process in the future where you have site plan approval and then if- Presumably there'd be more clarity with the planning board or discussion with yeah, the planning board. Yeah, there would be board. some permanent yeah. structure yeah. in place. Yeah. Yeah. So our authority under 286.1 doesn't trump planning board requirements. No. Your, 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 your questions are, are you going too far in light of your zoning ordinance? Okay. If not are you going too far in light of the rope throwers and knife chuckers or right, right. whatever yeah. that's right. rope dancing and yeah. right. synchronized You're clean swimming. On that. That was, yeah. that There's no rope dancing. Rope dancing, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. The, Unless Charlie's playing when, 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 when this <laughs> first appeared I talked with counsel and I said this just came out of nowhere. What I feel like I don't have anything to to use and he pointed me to that statute. So that's where you got involved to begin with. Um, that's clear. Your, your authority there is very clear, and it's what we've used for the prior two uh, licenses, yeah, yeah. and there's not really any question about that. It's, it's all about um, what, 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 is, what is the enforcement in the, the zoning world have to be. Okay. Are we also are we looking for, like we're calling it, this, this what we're going through now, we had said this would be a one-time event for the summer of... 2020. Yeah, that was that was an interpretation made by our code enforcement people mm -hmm. that said, and we we asked you, we said, hey, do you want to treat it like this? Yeah, yeah, no, and that's that was that was the stretch, yeah. uh, and I'll and I'll talk with with counsel about that too, and ask him about a one-time series of events because that's really what it boils down to. One time literally means one time, one day. I mean, I would think. So, you know, where does it cross the line into literally changing the use of the land? Which I I'm totally not sure what we're asking the legal advice now. I just heard five different questions. <laughs> that's, that's, why, that's, that's why we pay our lawyers the big bucks to sort through all those questions. Asking, you guys are asking us for a couple of days, but you don't even know what you're going to ask for legal people. 
we're good on that. No, we're just we're just chewing on the questions that we have. Chris already knows what what to bring to the lawyer. It, it boils down to the fundamental question: Have we overstepped our bounds in light of our zoning regulations? That's the main question. Okay. But me thinking about it myself, my questions would be a little more you know granular about those different. Tony topics that I brought Tony up. Tony thinks out loud. <laughs> I do. I think out loud. I talk in my hands. It's a French thing. It's a French thing. Okay. So yeah. let's move on. We're going to move on now. Uh, review action items for next meeting. We got a lot, I guess. Thanks for coming, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I got one thing I want to raise. What's that? Caught a glimpse of Gunner by chance? No, I haven't. Yeah. Maybe you're just steering clear of this mess. But, you would uh, be smart too. You know, actually, I get the town has uh, actually had quite, quite a few of these events. So when this does go to planning, I'd likely to did you go to be. Did you go to remember our, uh, the, the golf tournaments that happen on the lake? Oh. That is another same as this. You're, parking issues. I mean, you're right. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely you, right. You know the parking issues. Took care of there it, is. but yeah, I, I get them all. Um, you got to breathe. So. No, I agree. Yeah. I agree. As long 100%. as whatever we decide, whatever we do, it's just got to be. We just got to be consistent. We got to be acting from a position yep. of knowledge. Yeah. Um, so Ben, can I bring up one thing before Absolutely. we do that? Um, and I got one thing after her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so everybody's favorite, everybody's favorite topic, um, emergency lanes. I just want to do a little bit of housekeeping on that because when we um, had a big public meeting back in December, a motion was made and approved that we would. Um, continue to maintain the roads as is until September of 2020 with the notion that we would work towards a revised policy for the emergency lanes by March, end of March, right? Yep. Now, um, different things have transpired since then. Mm -hmm. There is the legal situation. Um, m what I want to clarify is, you know, my belief, and I could be wrong, is that the town will continue to that we're that they're that we're not going to adhere to a September cutoff, and that the town will continue to maintain the roads as is as we work through the legal processes. So uh, my understanding, and and I would support this, is that we will not change anything until the decision has been made in regards to this court case. However, I am not in favor of working on any new road standards at all until we have a um, decision from the court. I will agree with that right there. I don't think the subject should come up on road nope. standards. No, I, I think that until this is settled in court, I, I, I we should just leave the road standards alone until until we have a decision from the courts. I'd rather focus on the property and the money that could be made over on Route Four. Again, I would want input from the other two members. Donna, I've heard from you. John, I've heard from you. Yeah, I'd expect everything would be like frozen status quo pending the outcome of the litigation. So yeah. keep going. Okay, so no no new reworking of standards or anything like that until frozen. Okay. Across the board. But continue the status quo in regards to the roads. Yep. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that we discussed that publicly and yep. that, that it was yeah. a matter of record. Yeah, I, w I would think that if we changed something midstream while litigation was going on, it would put put the town in a bad light. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you, you just should leave room for the possibility that something else changes, the situation changes somehow where I can't imagine what it would be, but conditions change. So just leave yourself that opening. Yeah. Uh, Fair enough. Was that it, Donna? Yeah, that's all. Okay. I, and, and again, I just wanted to make sure that we all acknowledge that. Yep. Fair enough. Thank you. Publicly. Thank you for bringing that up. Tony, you have okay. uh, Yeah, Recycling Center. Um, I was there over the weekend um, and Brienne was pointing out that the outdoor collection of the paper and cardboard um, 
you know, even with the lid propped up, the rainwater is getting into that uh, dumpster and ruining it. And then the company, like, and we're also paying for that dumpster to be hauled away because we're not bailing it. Whereas if we bail it, we get forty-two fifty per bail. So we're losing money by not bringing it into the building to bail it. And then we're paying money on top of that to have the dumpster full of soggy cardboard taken away. So, um, we you know, decided not to bail it because there was something wrong with the bailer, right? And the COVID and all that? Well, they, they've already re returned to indoor operation for some plastics and milk jugs and I think the aluminum cans. You know, you something can, you, you can walk in and dump your glass there's, there's, yeah a glass maybe that was the other thing so I mean they're already making it work with those few items I you know the question is can we move the cardboard back inside so we can restore that little bit of revenue that we were getting so I would leave that up to I you know that might be a yeah, question the, for the, Sean the last thinking that we had yes we want to get back to it it's it, we, we're down to the point now where cardboard and paper don't really make much at all. So it's not a big, this is not a big financial decision one way or the other. Hauling costs are now a bigger factor for us than any material right. benefit of doing all this stuff. Um, the last conversation that Sean and I had <coughs> about paper in particular was um, we don't want to flip flop back and forth with how we're handling these various materials because educating the public and you know changing changing there is harder than changing anything in town yep. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. you know everybody uses it uh or almost everybody uses it and everybody gets in a groove and when you when you tinker with things there it it's hard to it's hard to untinker so we said in i think we talked about it in, in probably early august um yeah it's costing us a little bit of money um, but we don't know what the what what's the fall going to look like in terms of our ability to do anything. So we could say, short money. Let's not bounce around on this. Um, you know. So that's that's where we left it. We're we're trying to be deliberate in in going back to the way that we've done things. You know, do it doing it very deliberately, not just like willy nilly. Okay, let's. You know, COVID's over. Um, and we and frankly we want we want six months of of data on this in this new market to see what's worth really doing right um, mm. you know I I would be surprised we haven't we haven't looked at the numbers too much yet because um, we, we you know given the lag and how the, the expenses and the revenues come in on this thing we've only got a few months worth of data but I'd be surprised if we ever went back to crushing cans um, it's you know just the, the, the added revenue that you get versus the ease of not touching every aluminum can that, you know, we, we've, we'd love to do a, a real serious look at those, those major categories and say, well, okay, paper, it's worth the time and energy to bail it, you know, all that. So in the short term, yeah, it would, it would save us a few bucks, make us a few bucks, yes. But um, that, was, that was the last conversation we had about it. We'll continue to have those conversations. But we're, we're, we're making, what, 30 grand a year in selling recycled materials. Um, and we're spending 80 grand a year throwing away trash and paying 50 grand in payroll. We spend more on payroll than we do, you know, and payroll's a bigger number driving things up there than how much we get for it. And I'll put this out to everybody. It might not be a favorable thing, but I don't think we should be giving up dump stickers away for free. I think everybody should pay an annual fee to use the dump. If you ever want to put that up for discussion. Nope. Okay. <laughs> nope. Um, okay. I got one thing to do real quick though. Just had a question. Somebody has a, if they have a pothole on a town road in the neighborhood, who do they go to? Call the office. Call the office. Okay. Yeah. yeah we, the, the highway's not really reachable because yeah. they're out on the road, but we, we connect people with okay with highway all the time that's it okay anything <coughs> else so i guess we're ready to go into non-public what letter is it a. a i'll make a motion we go into non-public for rsa 91 a colon 32 a 
Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye, Ben Bartlett. Aye, Donna Danis. Aye, Tony Dumas. Aye, Tyler Reed. Aye, John Morin. Who second? Me. The Tonester. Okay, we are now entering into non public. Thank you, Nottingham. Good night.